<laughs> so you can't be like um well i'm not gonna interrupt you while you're cutting my haircut i gotta go take a pee but not that's one thing but you can't be gassing out the customer bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like if you're in the chair bro, you better not be boofing underneath that cape and then when i take it off or it s- s- starts to see all the air comes out right it happens more than you know oh i believe it What's up, nerds, and welcome back to another episode of the Garage Boozing Podcast. I'm your host, the man with absolutely no plan, the chase with the face for radio, Chase Shurka. And boy, do I have an absolutely awesome episode for you today. I am joined once again by your friendly neighborhood barber, my barber and yours, Gino Brancati, back again, and we have a great conversation in store for you. We talk about a wide variety of topics and things get a little wild, you know, that's how we do here in the Garage Boozing Podcast, and I know you guys are going to love it. So with all of that being said, you know what time it is. It's time to sit back, relax, kick your feet up, crack open a cold one, and if you're really feeling fruity, take a shot. Why not? Because this week's episode of the Garage Boozing Podcast starts now. Oh yeah, it's support for the Garage Boozing Podcast. It is brought to you by Manscaped. Manscaped will help you trim up the family jewels to make everything nice and right for the ladies. Make sure that you're using promo code TGBP20 for 20% off your Manscaped products. Oh yeah! Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of the Garage Boozing Podcast. Today, I am joined by one very special guest. To my left, your right, if you're watching on YouTube, we have your friendly neighborhood barber, Gino Brancati. Welcome back to the show. His, well, technically second time here, but if we're being real technical, his third episode here, because the last one we had to cut into two. But Gino, welcome back to the show. Thank you so much for having me. It's an honor to be here you know, for the second time. It's an honor for you to be in the garage for a second time. And we have a lot to talk about. So I'm just going to get right into it. This, oh, actually, shit, we forgot to take a shot. Like, yeah. hello, this is a Garage Boozing, Boozing Podcast. This is where we're going to start. I know. I was I was like, yo, he just let me off the hook. I'm not a big drinker. So <laughs> I, I, thought, I was like, all right, we're getting right into it. I totally but, forgot about the shot, and he was so happy, but no, it's a ritual. We're going to send it. Most of the time, sometimes we do do this off, uh, off air, but you know, I was like, you know what? We're going to wait till we're on air to do this one. Cheers, my friend. Cheers. Last time Gino was here, we talked about a lot of stuff. We talked about how he got into barbering, his history of being a barber, opening up his own shop, what got him into it, and also anxiety and a whole lot more. So if you missed that episode, rewind. Every episode has a, has a description. So you see the part one and two with Gino. Check that out for sure if you missed it because uh, a lot of that is going to have to do with where we lead here. But um, yeah, so big things going on in your life right now. Um, one of them is this barber versus TV competition. Tell me a little bit about this. So Barber vs. TV is a competition. It's relatively new. Um, to my knowledge, they came out with it to kind of promote what we do in the industry a little bit more and get it more, um, if I want to say, uh, recognized. Okay. It starts a platform and it also um, inspires other barbers. What it is is it's an Instagram account has 25k or so followers on it and they're organic they're all barbers for the most part there's quite a few people that are family and friends that may follow the barbers that have competed on it to support but for the most part there's probably some fans too that just like to see like what happens right yeah there's definitely some people that are into like cutting hair that follow it um I've noticed a couple of like my followers since I've been announced on it have started following it as I well. I hate to cut you off because I know you're explaining a lot of things, but I just want to say before it like leaves my mind. One of my like, you, do you, are you a tick? You you watch TikTok? Yeah, yeah, I watch TikTok all the time, and like it depends on like the like the algorithm and all this stuff we get stuck on. If I sometimes I'll scroll and I'll end up like at a barbering video and I'll see like people chopping up heads and shit like that, and like uh-huh. dude, when I see like a really sick haircut, I'm like shit. So I go to this guy's page and I scroll through a bunch, then I go back to my for you page, and then I get a whole bunch more barbers because barber I just stuff. like the shit yep. ton of them. And dude, it's like really cool to see what you guys do. Thank you. It's Appreciate like it. it's an art, man. It, it definitely it, it literally is. is an art. Yeah, um, that's something I'm definitely. Uh, I want to say that's, you know... It's not help, easy. Help, it, it, I don't think it's easy at all. 
No, no. It, it's not that it's easy, but there's a difference. You can learn to be like a barber and like cut hair and make a living and then it's a different thing to make it like your life and your passion. Yeah, for which sure. Which we got into in the last podcast. And you're making it your life and your passion. Yeah. So You said barbering like, saved your life in the last episode. Yeah, it and, definitely did, but I got to the point where um I just felt like stagnant, so I needed something more like like um you know, I knocked off a lot of accolades, like we said, like I opened up the shop, um, was booked up, um and I was feeling like almost a little like a little like I don't know like bitter towards the industry like wow I've been putting in all this work for five years and what do I have to show for it some Instagram pictures that I know are are, are fire and whatnot and have a few hundred likes at most and that's it like and then you see the other people in the industry you know most of us are like that you know we're, we're we're chomping at the bit to be at the top where these people that are on barber versus tv are competing on barber versus tv is is celebrity barber tv so um so far only celebrities well celebrity barbers have competed on it now that's a broad term because not a lot of people follow barbering but to us barbers like they're people that have they're influencers they have 100 Plus K followers. Some have 300, 400. Vic Blends. I don't know if you ever heard of him. You would say you're on TikTok. He's the guy with like the tattoos. Oh, actually, yes. People. I know exactly who you're talking exactly. about. Exactly. So, he, you know, like those are the kind of people that are um, competing on Barber versus t- TV. They don't have, you know. My guy's got the hiccups right now. Relax. I know. It's from it's from drinking. Um, <laughs> Takes one shot. <laughs> yep. Indigestion. All, already got heartburn. Um, but so, yeah, like that's how they got Barber versus TV to pop off was they would they they started it with these guys who all us barbers followed and said they're battling each other so what it is is it's a barber battle you go on in this particular event on stage it's its first one with like a real huge like live audience because it's at the ct barber expo which is like the Super Bowl of barbering events. It's the biggest one. I like how you describe that, the Super Bowl of barbering. That's, that's sick. That's how they describe it. So that's, that's, awesome. that's what they call it. You know, that's cool. and It's the biggest barber expo in the United States. So there's a huge live crowd. Um, and then there's already the huge following online as, as well. That, you know, there's, there's five to 15k people viewing the battles and stuff like that and that's a lot of people that's a lot of people taking their time out of the day to like watch and viewing stuff you and, know? and that's like organic like actual like barbers and people that are like engaged with it so it, it provides some exposure and it's only something that they've let some real surface level people do people that i look up to as a barber and then some people like that you may have heard of like vic blend stuff like that um, these people that are sponsored by clipper companies, etc. So now what they're doing is they're doing the unknown barber challenge. So this is their time where they've selected four barbers that. Oh, that was one of my questions. So there's only four competing in this competition. Yes. So this wow. is the first time too that it's been a tournament style setup. So typically they would do like, um, for example, they did Los Cut It versus uh, Diego and. Um, they competed, I think, in Chicago against each other. Was I it? love I don't, Chicago? I don't know where it was that they competed, but it was at a mutual place. And um, you know, th- those two are guys who are like one of the two biggest people in the industry. So you get people engaged with it. But this time, it's now in front of all these people that are at the Barber Expo. I don't know how many thousand people it is, but it's thousands, it's huge. thousands. It's huge. So all those people are there, and it's select. So they selected four people that they thought were on that kind of skill level. How did they select these people, though? So um, they put up a a post and they said, you know, obviously they got a lot of messages. This is really funny. Life comes kind of full circle in a way. Um, There's this guy out there. He really helped me get on the show. His name is Bones the Goat. Um, I've looked up to this guy since I started cutting hair. Excuse me. (laughs) Um, so I've looked up to this guy since I started cotton hair and, uh, he really helped me get into it. He told me and like, um, that he would help me, you know, he put in a word for me to Papito blessed hands, which is a guy who runs Barber versus TV, who would never view my message, which nothing gets Papito. He has 300 K followers and yeah, you send you send him a DM. He doesn't even read it. It's in his message request and whatnot. So, um, 
Bones has been fortunate enough for me to um, be like supportive and he's gotten back to me throughout the years as That's I've sick. reached out to him. Um, I have messages with him. It, it, it's crazy, dude. And, and it's like me telling him how much I look up to him. And then now I'm competing on something that he's competing on. Yeah. He's a celebrity barber. And um, you had to submit a video. So I submitted the video in that my wife recorded and made for me. I was going to ask you who made that. Yeah. At Abby Films. She started a photography. I was literally thing. just about to. I was about to say, but you took, yeah. dude. You're taking all the like all the questions I'm about to ask. You're you're already sending it. I love it. I'm sorry. I was no. I love it. I, I, it's great. And I was gonna shout out Abby Film. So good for you because that video was fucking sick. But yeah, she, that was her submission video. She's right? next level with it, and she did that in like I want to say thirty hours. Dude, the quad is really sick yeah. too. Whatever she uses, she's dude, like she got good, a good nice setup for her camera and whatnot. So, um, so yeah, I submitted the video. And uh, I showed a collection of my work on it too. You have to now you have to tell the voiceover with your story. Um, maybe we can link the video below. Absolutely. To, to Barbara versus page. Check the description it. below. Yep. Yeah. And on my account and um, basically. I, and I think, on Gino Brancati yeah. hair on Instagram. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, so yeah, I submitted the video and uh, Bones told Pepito to check it out. Pepito. You know, long story short, I was cutting hair about four hours after I submitted the video. It was like a day before the deadline, and all of a sudden I got a phone call from Florida, and I was like, figured it was spam because I get like spam calls. So you didn't answer. Long. I didn't answer, and then I got a text that said, "Answer your phone," and um, then all of a sudden a FaceTime came, and I'm like, "That's all it said was answer your phone." Answer your phone. Yeah, I'd be like, uh. So, so, and then it was a FaceTime and I'm still not like putting two and two together. I kind of have like anxiety. Like I'm with a customer cutting their hair and now I'm getting a FaceTime from a random. call, a, fa a FaceTime. Yeah. So I pick up my phone and I answer it and it's bones to go on it. The guy that I looked up. So you didn't know this yeah. was him. No, I didn't know. Dude, him. if I don't know a number, I don't answer. Yeah. You can ask Cole. He was in there cutting in the shop. All of a sudden I answer it and I'm like, yo, what's up bones. And then they all like looked up. They're like, what? So I, I, I go in the back room and I'm like talking to him. And he goes, yo, hold on a second. And then all of a sudden, Pepito, bless hands, joined in. He's like, you got selected. You made it. You're one of the, the four people. So what they're doing now, um, to not make this go on too long, is they're doing a tournament style for the first time ever. It's usually head-on, head battle. They selected four of us because, like as we were saying, in our group chat with me and the four unknown barbers, or three other unknown barbers that got selected, and Pepito, is this industry needs new people to eventually be the next Pepito Blessed Hands. That's wild that they only selected four, though, because one of my questions was how many people got selected. And they're like, four is like not a lot. So that's really cool. Yeah, it, it, it was definitely just to be on the show is like humbling. So, like, the only failure is if I go out there and like I botch a haircut and I'm not going to happen. Yeah, I, which I'm not even going to speak that in existence, but like, don't like, put it out yeah, there. Just to be on thoughts the show, become things. Don't do it. Just to be on the show is to is like a bucket list. You know what I'm saying? So I get the FaceTime from them, and I find out I'm on the show. And um, you know, I've been preparing for this for a while because I was already preparing to compete in Connecticut at the crop top competition. But now this is bigger. This is this is what every barber, no lie. And, and, in the United States wants to be doing there's only been 10 10 battles and they're all been celebrity barbers and as I said Pepito said there needs to be people that are going to take over the throne eventually bro like everything it's evolution so this is our chance to go showcase and you're young too yeah and that's what he said you know a younger younger crew to showcase and so this is our, our chance so I, I battle Sunday night at six six o'clock and the way that they do it is we battle for an hour we give our best haircut and then um do you have to, do you have to take up the entire hour though like what if your haircut I, I mean you can do two haircuts an hour if that's what you choose to do most people d choose to do one haircut and absolutely take their time with it right so um yeah you do that and then they record a video and like a picture and they put it up and there's a poll so you have to have like your city and your family and like your following behind you because sure. they vote for you and whatnot so that's it's like reality tv almost yeah yeah, they do interviews, Q and A's um, after the show and before the show. I'm going to have lives throughout the week um, with Papito and on Barber versus with Q and A's and and 
like us talking about um, who we're battling and whatnot. So yeah, it's 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 like a reality show in a way. That, that's what they're trying to do with it. You know, how long does a competition last? Is it like one day or is it multiple days? So that's what I was saying. Typically, it's just one day. You know, it's it's head on head, but because this is it's like a bracket. Style, right? There's like yeah. a bracket. So this this is tournament style, and it's at Connecticut Barber Expo, which is a two day event, anyways. So where in Connecticut? Uh, like Uncasville, if I'm pronouncing it right, it's at the Mohegan Sun. Oh, okay, sure. So it's at a lit event already, and it's got its own stage. There's two stages there, and it's got its own stage. You know, it's it's crazy. All the guys that are in it, they're all flawless barbers, just like my work. Guys that have been working in the shadows for years, trying to be at this. So we're all hungry guys. It's gonna be people that are coming out and throwing like, like this is the biggest event that they've been at and this is our super bowl bro this is like our this is like the pinnacle this is more than most people can say they checked off you know what i'm oh saying oh my god yeah next for me would be like you know that's that's kind of like thoughts you know what i'm saying but um it, it's it's huge so um i'm really excited for it and just the process of it has been really cool so far um, Where, is this going to air like on their uh, Instagram? Be, or? Yeah, they're going to live on their Instagram. So you can follow and watch it live on their stream. And then they're going to post it and voting polls last for an hour. And then after an hour, they close them. And what, and, what's their Instagram? It's a Barber versus... At Bar- Barber versus TV. That's fucking awesome for you. Yeah, you know, it took a lot to, to get there, you know, because last time I came here, you know, like I said, we were we were focused on really just me kind of coming into like a place where I felt like I was, like, blossoming and, like, um, starting to work towards something like this. So the fact that it's came this quick, which not that I haven't been, as I said before, I feel like I've been working for it for so long. So, like, I was frustrated, but, like, I've really put my nose to the grindstone, like, really a month before we did our first podcast. Dude, you're killing it on social media, too, with, with like, your hair profile and shit, too. Like, you're all about that shit, man. Stories all the time, shit like that, you know, like... Interacted with the fans and share the followers, whatever you want to call them, uh, dude, you're you're killing it. Absolutely, and like we're we're taking it next level. Like, um, getting Cole with me was huge, bro, because he sparked like a creative side inside of me where I was like super like um like drained of that at first. Like, um, so when he came to the shop, like I started teaching him how to cut, and he just like caught on so much quicker than anybody I've ever like been around. So. For me, I was just like, this is dope teaching somebody like this. And we're just, you know, people always joke that like he, we're, he's my mini me and whatnot because we're a lot alike. And I see a lot of myself when I was his age. So like he's easy for me to teach. You know, we're just being, I'm just being his friend. And, and, and you guys get a, you guys get along life. really well too, which yeah. also helps, you know? Yeah, like I just get the pre- the privilege of like mentoring him with while being his friend. And for sure if i'm his want to call it his boss so um well you own the shop so technically you are his boss right is that how that works or yeah yeah kind of but we all are our own boss they they rep so you know we're all our own boss but we all work together yeah um Dude, that your barbershop is popping every time i'm in there it's unreal it, it's gotten busier a lot, a lot busier man like um there was times just eight months ago where i was very down and out as i said in the last Uh, podcast and worried about the direction of my shop and really this summer we have seen a nice pickup in it and um, we've sorted out the people that didn't belong there and the people that do belong there and the career you have now is pretty solid yeah and we have a pretty good core and like everybody really understands the direction of where we're heading right now um and it's a cool ass barbershop too yeah the, the vibe is great i love like when i'm getting my hair cut and stuff and like everyone in the chairs are like talking to the barbers we're all having like the, uh, the same conversation going across the barbershop that's cool that's awesome yeah. and, and we try to create that atmosphere where every customer feels um very um i don't know the word um comfortable not only comfortable but um they they feel like a sense of energy in a way like they're um they we rub off on them. We have an impression on them. Whoa. You know what I'm saying? Rub off? Oh, man. Yeah. That's <laughs> you got to edit that one out. <laughs> um, but, like, the energy, like, rubs off on them in the way where we we have... Um, <laughs> dude, you're going to make me smile. <laughs> <laughs> well, dude, I'm like... I'm, I, I, get, I get what you guys are doing in the barbershop. It's like, I don't want my barber to rub off on me, right? No. Oh, no. 
I didn't ask for the happy ending. <laughs> no, this isn't the uh, the old rub and tug. <laughs> the old rub and tug. No, you can't tip an extra 50 and get the special ending. What if I did, though? Could I get the special ending? Yeah, you got to talk to the other guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, so let me ask you... Actually, were you going to no, say something? No, no, go ahead. All right, so let me ask you this. So with this whole uh, barber, shop versus, I mean, barber versus TV competition you have going on. So you win. What's next for you if you win? Actually, I'm going to say... He's going to win. I'm putting that out in the universe right now. Thoughts uh, become things. My boy's going to win. What comes next? When you win. I'm not going to say if. I'm going to say when. When you win. So that's... Honestly, bro, like everything right step now... Step at a time, right? Well, no, like everything right now is like... Like I'm good with everything. I'm, I'm, I'm at peace with everything in my life, as I was saying. And like feel very motivated and driven but that is the one question i still have for myself what's next what yeah like because this is like a like a big deal yeah and it's like most people don't get to be on this twice so then like what's next that's something that i ask myself and um it's scary because i'm kind (laughs) of like i i don't know and right. that's that's what freaks me out. I guess it's a good problem to have. Of course, um, it's not a bad problem to have. I mean, just even you being in the competition, regardless of what happens, is like great for you. You know. I will say this though: one thing that I learned was less than a year ago from today, I was in a place where you know I was up at night thinking about my shop, thinking about closing my shop, thinking about moving to another state to get recognized to cut hair. Was down and out. Spent nights you know just really really depressed and whatnot about my direction so i know how life can change and i know what like breakdowns do so like you know god forbid that happens breakdowns create breakthroughs i love that you know um there was this quote that i always grew up with my dad always used to say he oh, fuck, what, oh yeah he would, he would always say uh, a setback is a setup for a comeback yeah, and that, that's really what I feel like I kind of had because I was kind of down and out for a while, and that's why I mentioned Nicole coming back. Like, it kind of led a spark in me because he is young in it, and we both inspire each other. So we've been super into the photography stuff together, which um, I think has helped really lead to all the success we're having as well as, like, obviously the clothing brand and just, like, the hard work. But, like, dude, I, yeah, he's rapping tonight. Oh, I'm I'm a bad entrepreneur. I'm <laughs> a bad entrepreneur. Yeah. You see this? I got the BBL hat, the BBL shirt. Which, by the way, not to cut you off here, but I never paid for this hat. I texted you one day and I was like, "Hey, just so you know, I'm here at the no. shop filling up the ATM because I do have an ATM business on the side of one of the locations, having to be a Geno's shop." But anyway, I was like, "Bro, like, how much do you want for this?" Hat? He never texted me back, so I'm like, well, "I got a free hat, I guess." You know, like, what, what do you want from me? My only regret is that I didn't give the free hat while I had it to your dad, not you. He has a hat? No, that's my only regret. Oh, and yeah. You right. get it instead of you because Ray, Ray, Ray is my dude. He, I got to admit, man, him and you. He's a guy. I don't know who's cooler. It's, 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 it's Listen, a toss it, up. It's probably me by like a centimeter because my dad's pretty cool, but like I'm fucking awesome. I just started cutting Chase's dad's hair since the last podcast and it has been an understatement would be saying it has been a pleasure. <laughs> he is yeah. like Chase, but a little funnier. I got can't yeah, lie. No, you're not wrong. You're I don't wrong. know if it's because it's the old man vibes and he's talking exactly. and he's so funny and youthful or what it is, but he's the man. You would not expect a 58 year old man to be like as funny as he is. Like he just doesn't give a fuck and it's yeah. so funny. And like when you were on the podcast, he loved your two episodes because they were back to back. It was two parts. And he was like, I got to get my hair cut by Gino, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, well, he's pretty booked up. So like, I'll text him. I totally forgot to text you. I don't know how he made I think he made Did he make it on Booksy? Book Is that what he did? Oh, yeah, he probably well, We got each other's number now. Like, I, <laughs> I love so that. He's booked with me twice now. And both times I've had to reschedule with him because the one time was on like the 4th of July weekend, I think. Or right and it was before. like 9 in the morning or something. He told yeah. me about that. So we did it early. And then the last one I had this wedding on Saturday. So I had to cut his hair on like Thursday or Friday night. But now I got his number and we text and he's the man. Yeah, I was like, dude, I was like, dad, you're going to love Gino. Like, forget your fucking hair studio one haircut, you know, like the buzz, buzz, buzz. Gino fucking made this 58-year-old man look like he was 38 years old. It was crazy. I love it. But, you know, to finish up what you said, what not, what's next, 
would really be like I've been getting a little bit into like hair coloring. Um, so I was gonna bring that up, but yeah, I'll let you start. And then yeah, I'll for finish. like my personal like career, I'm gonna get into like coloring like I don't know necessarily women's hair, but like guys hair like the top of the hair and stuff like that i did um with some help cole's hair today and it came out pretty sweet um and it's something that i'm like pretty interested in that's just something that like like i said like that's my only worry is like staying stagnant so i don't want to stay stagnant and um what does that mean stagnant i suck at big words you're stuck oh you know, okay. you're not moving so like why would forth. you say stagnant not stuck um I don't know. It's just been a word in my vocabulary right, for years. Yeah, but that's okay. I don't have a lot of big words, but I guess that's me <laughs> either. So that's why I was very confused. All right, um, sta sta stagnant. So yeah, basically, man. Um, there was a lot of years of like working hard like this, and you go through waves of as an artist of being like creative and having inspiration. So when you're in those phases, you just gotta you know really fucking grind and get everything you can out of it because. Um, sometimes you're going to go through like a, a creative block and a rut. And, um, I think the biggest thing to bounce back from that is realizing that that happens and it's okay. The scariest thing is just hoping that it doesn't happen at a crucial time. Like sure. before I'm about to perform at Barber versus, but, right. um, like I said, we're not worried about that. That's, that's a whole other thing. You know what I love about you too? It's like, I almost relate to myself in a way, but like I think you take it like way farther than me, and I fucking love it. Is like you do whatever the fuck you want. Like for example, you got red hair now, or what? What do you? So do? Like is it pink? Gold, it's like rose pink. gold. Yeah, right. So like me, I would never do that. But like at the same time, like I don't know, maybe I'd fucking rock it. But like you just fucking you send it, and you don't give a fuck. And I love that you put the dangle in. I put the dangle in. Cole, you can't see him. He's off camera now. He's got the fucking dangle in. I'm. A, I love the dangly. Dangly family. All right. So that shit's fucking awesome. But like the fact that you just like send whatever you want me to, your style I fucking love. And this is like that I'm like about to make out with the guy by complimenting him so much. But like, dude, like you're fucking like the, the shit you wear, the fucking glasses you wear. You took off the shades, by the way, which I'm very upset about because they're fucking fire. So but like the guy dyes his hair blonde two weeks ago. Now it's fucking pink. Like he's doing whatever the fuck he wants and he doesn't give a fuck what you think, and I don't give a fuck what you think either. This shit's I fucking love fire. It. No, no, seriously, it's fucking sick. You're giving me like a heat miser vibes right now. Oh, oh man. Like, like, um. <laughs> oh, yeah, so tattoos. How many tattoos do you have? Have you kept count at this point? Because you have a shit ton. You got sleeves on both sides, right? Like, um, I don't really know. I don't really have. Like, do you count your number. sleeve as one tattoo? Pretty it? much, yeah. Like, okay. that. that's the thing. Like, this is just like a piece together now. And, um,. You know, I, I have more than five grand in tattoos, if that explains more how much tattoos Which I location have. hurt the worst? Fingers. Really? Yeah. What do you have on your fingers? Fingers are the nipple. The reason I... You have your nipple tatted? <laughs> I mean, around my nipple. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, nice. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, like, the fingers hurt bad, bro. Because I'm getting a finger tattoo tomorrow, which is why I'm asking. Really? Yeah, dead ass. Are you... I'm not, I'm not joking. I swear to God. Yeah. But I'll let you continue, and I'll tell you what I'm going to get after. You'll be like, ha, Why? Ha. Because there's no muscle, and it's straight on bone. That's so, right. like, this part of your fingers, like the like top of your fingers, or like the inside of your fingers? Both. The inside hurt bad? I mean, this is the thing. So I got to be drunk so when I show So this is the up. difference. The worst tattoo of my life was my chest piece. Hands down, 100%. Worst tattoo I ever had. See, what? I got a tattoo right here in my heart, and it didn't hurt at all. Yeah, but my tattoo comes... To the nipple. All the way around. And oh, it okay. It connects okay. to my sleeve. It's a lion. So um, right around here, the bridge coming in and the armpit and whatnot and around the nipple is dude, some of the worst. <laughs> nipple. Worst fucking pain. Like, dude, I was biting on my shirt collar on my chain. I, I had, like, my eyes were watering up. It sucked, dude. It was the worst thing ever. I but see. this took, these all took three four minutes tops right so yeah the sheer pain of this was worse but dude you can last for three dude, minutes I, good. well i can usually last for like half a minute but anyway um, <laughs> so uh, i do i saw this shit where like you can like spray on your finger and it makes it numb doctor numb yeah so like why didn't you use that i've used it once um in the session didn't last that long because of complications not due to that but just schedule complications um so i can't really say um I don't know. I just feel like 
so I've I've read that some artists don't like when you use it because it makes the skin harder to tattoo on. So I guess if you're communi like communicate with them and tell them and ask them if they're cool with it, that's one thing. But um, I don't know why, but I'm the kind of person that doesn't like to like make someone uncomfortable and make them say like yes well, because sure. they don't want to say no or like i don't know i don't like to ask for things or make, like why not so i just i'm just like whatever i'm just gonna go in well there. especially if you're an artwork on your body you don't want to do something that's like gonna make them feel weird i get that but i'll tell you this if i ever get my chest done again yeah i'm, I'm putting them in cream it's spraying it all over right? yeah, yeah so anyway the finger tattoo i'm gonna get is gonna be on the inside of my finger what are you getting it's gonna be this finger right here and i'm getting a mustache on my finger so i can go like this and I have a mustache on my so face. So we can get a nice picture of you in the barber shop. That's it. I love it. When you get the fade. Yep. And I'll be I'll, and I'll be like I'll be like this right here, because it totally fits my personality. I have lips on my ass for God's sakes. You ever seen my lip tattoo on my ass? I have. You want to see it again? All right, I'll show it. Move the camera. I will. You haven't seen my lips, have you? You want to see? It? You haven't seen my lips. He said. You ready to see my ass? He's actually gonna do this. Look at that right there. See that? Those are lips from Google. I have no idea whose lips those are. They're his grandma's. That'd be awesome, actually. I should have asked her, but oh my gosh. <laughs> if she knew I had lips on my ass, she'd be mortified. But yeah, so like I'm actually, I, I've been wanting that too, ta that too, that tattoo for like a couple months, but I'm so afraid of the pain. But I, I just ordered this like spray shit that comes in the mail tomorrow off Amazon. It's like doctor number or whatever. Yeah. But like, so am I, am I supposed to tell the guy that I put it on now? Because like you make. I mean, I don't really know, bro. I mean, I'm just okay. not gonna tell him. I'm just gonna show up hammered, and then I'm just gonna like spray this shit and be like, dude, what do you mean? Like, I you didn't know, like vo like vlog your experience. Or... Maybe I should. I mean, I don't, dude. A, a mustache. If you're gonna get hammered, you might as well. A mustache on my finger. How long is that gonna take? Ten minutes, maybe, if that. Is it not, like? Do you have a picture? Is it yeah, like I'll show you exactly what I'm getting. Just like lines? Oh, it's, it, there's a lot of shading, and that's what scares me because the shading always hurts the worst, for me anyway. Where the fuck is it? That's exactly what I'm getting right there. That's a thing. Yeah, that's gonna hurt. I'm not even lying. Probably, but I don't think it'll last. That's time, all right? shading. But yeah, no, it'll be like five minutes. And you know what? Handle adversity, as my dad would say. Handle adversity, you little baby back bitch. I'd be like, Dad, we've gone long road trips. I would love to hear him say that. Oh, dude, I'd be seven years old. We're going on a long road trip, or like in North Carolina, where our family goes on vacation and stuff sometimes. And I'd, I'd want to go to the bathroom. My dad would literally drive 17 hours straight, not let me go to the bathroom. I'd be like, Dad, I really got to pee. He's like, handle adversity, you little fucking pussy. And I'm like, all right, Jesus, I'll pee in a water bottle. No, I'm totally kidding. Like, he would let me go, but he'd be really mad when we pulled over to the rest area. That's every parent. They're like, I know. They're like the next rest stop is only 48 miles away. <laughs> I'm like, well, 48 miles is a lot. <laughs> but as a kid, you're like, oh, that's not too bad. We're already going this many miles. And now as an adult, I realize... Damn, bro, that's like a whole other hour oh my in the God, car. Yeah. No, I can't hold it that long. Fuck no, I can't hold it that long. I've always been someone who loves stopping at rest stops. Oh, me too. I stop. If love I to get food, go in there, get out the car. Like, <laughs> dude, I'll hit an, an unnecessary amount of them on the way up. Oh my God, Especially me too. If they see like a McDonald's, like I see the big golden M. You're like, all right, I'm in. Yeah. Dude, and the best thing about rest stops, too, is, like, uh, you get out, you can stretch a little bit, you know, you got to pee, and it's just like, dude, I don't like to hold my piss, so if I have to piss, if I even feel that I have to pee, I go to the bathroom immediately. I hate holding it. My dad would at the same time be like, oh, I'll hold it for hours. Yeah, well, whatever, Ray Rod. Go do your thing. But, like, Ray Rod. <laughs> yeah, I would much rather, if I feel like I have to go pee, I'm going fucking pee. I agree. I mean Why hold it? It's just like farts. They say if you hold your farts in, that's bad for you. Or if you got a shit and you hold it, it's I terrible. I actually can't agree with you. I'm a barber, so like, <laughs> so you can't be like. Um, well, I'm not going to interrupt you while you're cutting my haircut. I got to go take a pee, but not that's one thing. But you can't be gassing out the customer. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> Look, if you're in the chair, bro, you better not be boofing underneath that cape. And then when I take it off or it s starts to... See All the air around, comes out, right? It happens more than you know. Oh, I believe it. And you're, and you're thinking in your head, wow, you just shit your fucking pants while I'm cutting your hair. Like, you really just shit your... Like, you couldn't have held it? Like, and I'm sitting there thinking, like, did he try and hold it? Is he, like, uncomfortable right now thinking, like... Wow, I just shit my pants and this smells. I wonder if he smells it. And we both know, but it's never set. You've never done it to me, though, in our time of me cutting your hair. Little did you know, maybe it was silent but deadly. All right, maybe uh, 
Oh, wait, no. If it's silent but deadly, you don't hear it, but it smells really bad. And yeah, I'm not a big farter. I don't know. We I mean, it's human nature. I, I don't really care. It doesn't bother Everybody me. Everybody farts. It's funny. It's funny to talk about it, yeah. actually. Dude, honestly, like, I'm so immature. If I hear someone fart, it's the funniest thing to me, and I'm, like, such a child. I don't even care. It makes me laugh. I hear a fart, and I'm, like, I'm dead. And I'm, like, seven years old dying at this fart. How about girls doing it, though? Disgusting. Repulsive. <laughs> <laughs> right. Listen here. That's way different. If a girl ever farts in front of me, get the fuck out of my bed. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I mean, I mean, it's, it's natural, I guess, but do I like it? No, I'm not going to like it. I'm not looking up some like, Brazilian no, no, like, no, no, like, shit. Say, say you're on a first date. She's, she's Farts on the first date? She's gorgeous. Like, Oof. 10 out of 10, and you're out to dinner, and the music's real quiet. And, and there's some flashing You guys are talking, and you're having a moment of silence all of a sudden, and just a wet one comes out. What do you do? I hope it's the table next to me. But it isn't. You know it isn't. Like, are you going to ignore it? Are you going to go down there later on that night just knowing that it happened? Or, like... Wow. Or are you going to be like, damn, I got myself a girl who's really, like, comfortable and bold with herself and, like, not trying to be something that she's not? Well, every girl poops and every girl farts. So, honestly, I'd accept it at the end of the day. Do I like it? No. Am I excited to hear it? No. But at the same time, on the first date, she's ripping one out. Like, yo, welcome to the party. Let's go. You know? Yeah, like, like I kind of feel the same way. Like, I would be like... That's really fucking gross, but at the same time, it's kind of cool. Thank you because now I don't have to have a stomach ache all night holding <laughs> <in> my farts. <laughs> now, now I can fart for you. No, you're, yeah, you're, you're like you just open up the the window and the door for this, so we're gonna do this together now. I guess. You're like, all right, well, she farted and we just met, so now I can fart. Yeah. All right, cool. So you hear that and you're like, all right, you think that was good? All right, hold on a second. <laughs> yeah, beat that. Yeah, and she fires back way better than I'm like, alright, I'm out at that point. <laughs> then it's not cool. Yeah, no. Is she slapping the cheese from a fart? Ugh, I don't know. <laughs> oh, damn. Alright, so I got one more question here for you. Actually, two. I'll make, I'll make the first question here a little short just because I'm curious. What's your biggest fear? What comes after that? I love that, actually, because I'm right there with you. But I actually had the same... Well, like, eh. well yeah, like what... what what happens when you die dying is scary yeah. and and people that say oh i'm not afraid to die fuck you you fucking liar you're fucking scared we're all scared and then my old rebuttal that oh someone walks into your house and like points a gun at you. oh that's different because i know i'm gonna die what the fuck is the difference what do you mean yeah I, i'm i'm very afraid to die i'm like if i'm on my deathbed I'm, I'm i'm scared i mean because like i'm a spiritual person i feel like i have a feeling that like your your life carries on but like you always have that feeling like what if it is like nothing what if you literally just go to bed Splat. and like, yeah, yeah. Well, honestly, like no I dream, I want to die my sleep because like, you know, yeah, the other way seems horrible. Yeah, yeah, yeah seriously. Like, yeah. Like, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, death is such a morbid thing to talk about too. It's nuts. But like, yeah, I felt that energy. I feel like a lot of us ignore it, which is a weird thing. Cause like, we're all going to die. All of it. Dude, 150 years ago, there was different people on the earth than there is now. Yeah. I, would just, I mean, that's something that I always think about is like, I think about death way more than I should. No, it sounds very like dark, does but like it, does it kind of freaks you out? It does, yeah. When I think about it, so I even, you do say that like you don't have anxiety, but I think you're very unaware of your anxiety. Yeah, that's but it's really like a form of anxiety. That's like a phobic thought. Like that's an irrational fear because it's an ab- inevitable thing that's going to happen. It's out of your control. So why are you? And like, that's why I wouldn't call it anxiety because like I feel like anxiety. But that's what anxiety is defined by irrational. Thoughts. So you don't you don't get nervous about things that you like might have control over because like I have less nervous i have less nervous about things that are in my control because like it's like backseat driving bro like when someone else is going 80 around the corner you're nervous but when you're the one behind the wheel you're like no i got this oh that makes sense actually yes. no i get what you're saying like you're like dude why the fuck are you freaking out but it's like you got to put yourself in the guy's shoes next to it he's not hyped up like I did it to Cole on the way here. It's probably scared shitless. I was hyped up flying here, li- listening to my music, cutting corners. On the way to the garage, he's like, "Yeah, yeah! <laughs> woo!" Yeah, exactly. And like, um, yeah, he was probably a little nervous for his life. So okay, like I'm not gonna say like I don't feel anxiety ever because I'd be a fool to say I don't. But like, I think that the the one thing I could think of that makes me anxious, you're probably right, would probably be dying. I just yeah. when I think about death, that just fucking freaks me out because like. I wouldn't say either dying not to cut you off, but like it's more like what not, happens not when you die. That, but not like not living like a full life. Like I want to live to like seventy five plus. You know what I'm saying? Like sure. I fear that like 
I'm going to leave my family and loved ones behind like at a young age and I'm not going to live out my life. You know what I'm saying? That's my biggest fear. I don't know. Either way, yeah. De- death is definitely, and yeah, it makes me anxious. That's the one thing I think about sometimes and I probably feel some anxiety. So yeah, I, I'm not going to say I never feel it because everybody gets anxiety. Like that, that's a thing. Yeah. I just like to say that I'm not generally an anxious person. And I don't even mean, not, yeah, I'm, like I don't even mean to be a dick by saying it, but like normally I'm not an anxious person. But when I think about that, like, ugh. Yeah, no, I I have to agree with you. That's definitely my top top fear. I think that's probably most people's biggest fear. Of course, like, and say I'm eighty years old. I'm sitting on my deathbed. I got my family around me and shit. And I know I'm about to go out, dude. That suck. That has to suck. I'm not gonna say it I'm sucks. I'm going to though. the Empire State Building or the closest biggest building, and I'm literally gonna be a bird because I've always wanted to be one. <laughs> so what does that dude, mean? That's I mean, so you're much gonna painful. fly. Oh, you mean you're gonna jump? Yeah. Oh my yeah. god. <laughs> Yeah, bro, like, are you going to feel it when you go from 10 stories down? No, it's going to be boom, over, and it's going to be lit. Dude, I'm going to do a fucking gainer for the first time. <laughs> I'm going to do a gainer. I've never done a gainer before. 80 I've years always, old. I've always been afraid of, like, what it's going to feel like when I land. But, listen, if you're jumping off the Fenimore to concrete, this is really, we we probably shouldn't air this. <laughs> <laughs> like, this is really not. This He's just like, un- unhook me, uh, I'm going off the bridge, uh, let me go. But that's what I'm like, dude. Do you had, think your family would rather see you as mashed potatoes or like in a hospital bed? But what if I went somewhere no one could find me? That's even, te- that's worse. Because what, like if they can't find you, then maybe they're like, oh, well maybe he's I leave a note. I took care of it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... Family comes in, apartment's empty, or whatever the assisted living home is at that time when you're of age, you see a note on the bed. I took care of it. <laughs> They're like, oh, he took care of it. He's good now. No, no, don't worry. I know would be some crazy <laughs> shit on the real. You, you book yourself a skydiving trip, and you get up there, and then you get to the highest elevation. You got scissors in your the, pocket? <laughs> no, like before the guy, or that, that'd be funny. Before the guy, <laughs> <laughs> you know, be funny. <laughs> before the guy hooks up, you jump you, first. You just like, Fuck it! It's about to launch out. That would be crazy. For and fun. then you see the video too. He's got he's got the body came on too. He's like grabbing at you. And you're, How are you you're not a legend for the rest of your life? No, if you did nothing for the rest of your life, you were going down as the fucking dude that booked a skydiving flight to end his life by going on that shit, bro. I mean, honestly, if I knew I was terminally ill and I had the chance to skydive to my death, I'd probably take that rather than just like. That's what, well, that's why I threw it. Out. I, that relates back to what you're saying, actually. Okay, I, I, I get that. Anyway, so what is one thing that you absolutely, absolutely, am I okay? Am I all right? Hold said on. too many. I feel better now. Cool. My, <laughs> <laughs> my face is so right now. All right, so last question I have here for you is, uh, what is one thing that you absolutely want to do or accomplish before you die? Wow. Um... My answer is very easy. I already know what it is. And it's probably going to be way different than a lot of people's, but I'll let you go first. Unless you want me to go first. I will. You go first. And mine's very selfish. I'm a very selfish person. I'm sorry. It's my life. Just reading that question, which I got off Google, before I die, I want to have a million dollars in my bank account. Oh, my dad's going to be like, oh, oh you sound like you care about money. But you can divvy it up. Yeah, exactly. Oh, like my, ki- my kids are taken care of. My, grand- my, my grandkids are taken care of. Or, well, maybe not a million dollars, but like... You get the gist. You're like my family is very well off. If I'm dying, have a million dollars in my bank account, and that get divvied out to my family, sure. But still, I think that's a big milestone that anybody would want to accomplish. Like if you're gonna ask anybody and they don't want to have a million dollars in their bank account, go fuck yourself. You're fucking lying. But I like I said, that's I'm, a great. That, that's I like it. I, 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 it's I, selfish I, but not selfish. Selfish You're right. It's selfish, selfish but not selfish because, like, selfish if I was going to die the next day, obviously that money's going to my family. But at the same time, like, when I get to the point, I'm not saying if, I'm saying when I get to the point of having a million, a million dollars in my bank account, that is going to be a milestone in my life. And I'm going to be very proud of myself. I'm going to be very happy. And fuck everyone else. Fuck I love it. Um, I would Just s- kidding. I don't mean that. I would say... Um, See, this is going to be a real answer, and I'm like an asshole, but go ahead. I would say that it would be just to make sure that um, I'm fully satisfied and at peace with every uh, Okay, let me let, let me rephrase this before you go. Okay. So this isn't like you know you're going to die. This is just one accomplish, let me one like something you want to do or accomplish 
before you die. So something you want to do in your life. Okay. Um, then... So it doesn't have to be like, all right, like I know I'm going to die. Like, I'm, you know, like. Yeah. Um, then I definitely want to be selected to be like one of, uh, well, not selected, but, you know, like sign on like a wall pro team or a baby list pro team, something like that, and be like an actual like this is a nice step towards it in Barber Versus to get to that platform, but just be like an actual educator and a household name, like someone like. So that you're saying, so like as a barber, you can you can get signed as a barber. Yeah, because we like we cut hair and we buy these companies and whatnot, and then they have influencers. You know, they get these people who are, are public figures and influencers, and they sign them and whatnot, and you know they get them to uh, to promote their stuff, and you know that that would do what. Maybe not a million dollars, but that would definitely provide a lot of money for me and my of family course. and provide a lot of opportunities to fly you a lot of places. You get to, um, you know, educate classes in different places, see different um, parts of the world. So, yeah, that's like what my goal is and that's my dream. So that's what I've been working towards. And that would make you very happy to accomplish. Yeah, that, that's right now. That's like my biggest goal, you know. I love that. Yep. See, now I sound like a dickhead because I'm thinking about money. But like my dad's always like, oh, yeah, money. Well, no that way. would be money. Because you're right, actually. I think money, so hand in hand, like yeah, you're right. Yeah, believe me, I want some. I want some bread, but like at the end of the day, I do. Like when you're saying like more of a sentimental value, you want to feel like fulfilled, like at the end that you've done all the things that, or at least one of like the major things that you wanted to do that you set your life out for. You know, that's a real answer. Yeah. I fucking love it. Like you set your life out to make money. You're you're a, a businessman. You own your own business and can do other shit so um that's a very real goal for you i wear a lot of hats what can i say i'm a i'm a busy bee buzz buzz i hate bees by the way i tell everyone i'm allergic to bees i'm not allergic i'm just very afraid why i just said that i'm not sure probably edit that out because i sound like a bitch but anyway <laughs> honestly organic conversation i fucking love it every single time are you going to finish that? You had a little bit left in that shot. He's trying to cheat us, guys. Nah, so, I can't. It's this much. No, are you getting... Cole can. All right, rock, paper, scissors. You lose, you take this much of the shot. All right. So it's just one out of one. No, no two eyes, out of three. And I know what you're going to eat. All right, ready? One out of one. Yeah. So it's rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Yeah. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Fuck. I'll take it. All right, whatever. Man, manifested it. Yo, and before we go, make sure you follow the At Bar Reverses TV page. Because on Sunday at 6 o'clock, I'm competing in it, and I need the city behind me, and I'm going to vote for my haircut because I need to advance in this tournament and bring home the chip for the 518. So, yeah, vote for my boy so we can get him to win a belt, win a championship, bring the shit home to the 518. But, all right, folks, with all that being said, we will see you dorks next week. Woof, what an episode. I knew you guys were going to love that. Gino, thank you so much for coming again, joining me here on the Garage Boozing Podcast. It's always a pleasure when you're around. And, bro, you are the absolute man, and I wish you the best of luck in your upcoming competition. I know you're going to crush it, and I know you're going to take home that trophy, so they better have it ready for you. But, folks, please don't forget the absolute number one way to support the brand. Buy some merch. We've got hats. We've got T-shirts. We've got hoodies. We've got sweatshirts. You name it, we got it. And it's all available to you at www.garageboozing.net. And nerds, don't forget to follow the brand on all of your favorite social media accounts at Garage Boozing as well as YouTube if you'd rather watch than listen. And of course, don't forget to follow, like, subscribe, whatever the button is on all of your favorite podcast platforms so you can be notified as soon as a new episode is released. We are on Spotify, we're on Amazon Music, we're on iHeartRadio, we're on Pandora, we are everywhere. All podcast platforms, you name it, we're there. Go subscribe. Thank you. Well, that's all the time we have for today. And guys, thank you so much for your support. This whole thing would not be possible without all of you. So I thank you guys every week. I'm going to continue to do so because without you, there's no brand. There's no podcast. So thank you guys so much for all of your support. And with all that being said, I'll see you nerds next week. Ladies, gentlemen, and nerds, do you have what it takes to be a guest on the fastest growing, alcohol chugging, and nonsense talking podcast? Well, now is your chance. The Garage Boozing Podcast has new guests every week, and you could be one of them. Just simply log on to www.garageboozing.net, click the Be on the Show tab, and submit your information. It's that simple. Join the boozement or be a loser. Don't miss your chance because we're taking this to the moon.